Hi everyone, I'm reading another book in this series by Andrea Beatty, Rosie Revere Engineer, Ada Twist Scientist, Iggy Peck Architect, and this one's called Sophie Valdez Future Prayers. Sophia was a baby who got things done helping her family before she turned one. She and Abuelo went out every week to help elderly friends around Blue River Creek who couldn't get out and about on their own and with no place to gather, was stuck home alone, raking the leaves and taking pets for a walk or just dropping by for a treat and a talk. Sophia Valdez did as much as she could for her family and friends and her whole neighborhood. A dreamer, a doer, a real life go-getter. Most people like good, but Sophia liked better. Each morning, Abuelo walked Sophia to class. They walked home again along Blue River Pass, making plans, munching cookies, Abuelo and girl, except for that Tuesday when Pup saw a squirrel. With a howl, Pup took off, racing all through the town, over, under, beneath, and all around. Sophia scrambled to try to keep up with the ho hollering man and the bellowing pup. Up Squirrel ran to the top of a hill, made of leftover junk for the local landfill. They reached the tip top of the mountain of trash, which jiggled and broke with an ear-splitting crash. Down they all tumbled and hit with a thud and a mouldy old pumpkin surrounded by mud. Ouch, cried Abuelo. He struggled to stand. A dangerous mess, he said, grasping his hand. The next day, Sophia walked to school solo, but it wasn't the same without her Abuelo. This is not right, declared young Sophia, who glared at Mount Trashmore and got an idea. The very next morning at half past dawn, she planted a sign at the front of the lawn. She stood back and smiled and Pup gave a bark. Get rid of Mount Trashmore. Let's build a new park. Each of the neighbors had something to say about benches and fountains and places to play, meeting spots, gardens, a basket for bees, a rubber duck pond and a kiosk for cheese. She drew every thought on a map of the park, which was perfectly perfect by a quarter to dark. It's not really a time. She drifted to sleep in her soft, cozy bed. Then bam, she woke up with a thought when a thought smacked her head. Her heart skipped a beat as she realized each one of her neighbors had said, let me know when it's done. Oh. They all thought Sophia could build it alone, but how could one girl do so much on her own? The weight of that thought made her tender heart ache. As night thunder growled and she lay wide awake, then dawn brought a storm and a gloomy sky wept, and the heartsick Sophia finally slept. Abuelo baked cookies when Sophia got up. He gave her a bagful and sneaked one to pup. He blinked back a tear as he hugged his Sophia. For courage, he whispered, te amo mi vida. Sophia's knees wobbled. She felt weak inside. She looked at his ankle and she quite nearly cried. Though she didn't feel brave or courageous at all, Sophia Valdez went to face City Hall. So she was going down to the government office. The mayor's office sent her to room 401, the Blue River Creek, Department of Fun, which sent her downstairs to room 302, the office of duck ponds and cool things to do, to the office of monkeys, the Department of Cheese, the Division of Fountains and Meetings and Bees, then down to the basement so musty and cramped 
where all the town's papers were sorted and stamped. And that's where the clerk said what no one else did. You can't build a new park. You're only mm. a kid. The words smacked Sophia deep down in her heart. Her plan was kiboshed before it could start. I think, said Sophia, I think that law's wrong. But her second grade voice didn't sound very strong. The clerk said, Clearly, it cannot be done. Do you have any questions? And Sophia said, One, if you were me, and if I was you, and he was your grandpa, what would you do? Well, I... Said the clerk. Then she said nothing at all. She thought and she thought. Then she sent out a call to every employee through City Hall. The entire government of Blue River Creek crammed into the office to hear Sophie speak. But her words jumbled up and her cheeks turned bright red as a dozen emotions rushed into her head. Her heart beat so loudly she thought it would crack. The crowd leaned in closer. Sophia leaned back. Then her arms brushed the edge of the old cookie sack. And that was the moment when Sophia first knew being brave means doing the things you must do. Though her heart, your heart cracks with fear, though you're just in grade two, she took a deep breath, looked the mirror in the eye, and though her knees wobbled, she held her head high. Sophia started talking. She spelled out her plan and why it all mattered and how it began. And once she got rolling, she had lots to say about meeting spots, monkeys, and places to play, the other ideas for things they could do to help the town's elders and other folks too. She had thoughts on the library, thoughts on the zoo, and perhaps the way a way to combine the two and... All right, go start a petition if the Salmonta Park will start a commission. And so young Sophia got right to work with some help from her family and pup and the clerk. Then others joined in, not all, but a few, like Miss Lila Greer and the kids in grade two. There were herrings and surveys and taxes to figure, then bulldozers, cranes, and a blue big, bigger digger. They all built that park. That's how it got done, with the hard work of, by, and for everyone. But it began with a dream of one person, just one, who laced up her shoes, then led the way to help Blue River Creek get a new place to play. Now every evening, till long after dark, the town comes together at Citizens Park. They all hold this truth to be self-evident that Sophia Valdez could grow up to be president. Until then, Sophia, that real life go-getter helps Blue River Creek get better and better. It's a very clear message in this book, isn't it? One person with one idea can make a difference. Please don't sit there saying, but not me, but not me, I can't make a difference. There's more in you than you think.